In this lecture, we are going to look at how to code ICD-10 CM diagnoses for Chapter 19, Complications of Medical and Surgical Care. So first, let's look at the Complications of Care coding guidelines. There are specific guidelines for Chapter 19 on coding pain, transplant complication, codes that include external cause, and complications of care codes within a body system chapter. Now all of these can be found in your ICD-10 CM coding guideline in, in the chapter specific part C, official coding guidelines, and then we go to chapter 19, and the complication of care is part G of those guidelines, one through five. And again, remember inside some of the ICD-10 CM tabular sections, the coding guidelines are in front of each of the sections as well. So in the code manual I'm using, if I open up to the front of chapter 19 in the tabular section, which chapter 19 starts on page 949, and then I go to page 952, I can see this is where the complications of care coding guidelines start. But the first three pages of chapter 19 in the tabular section are all the chapter specific coding guidelines. So again, as a coder, remember to always review the coding guidelines. Those ICD-10 CM coding manuals that have them right in front of that section in the tabular are nice because it provides that refresher for just those that are applicable to just that section. Remember the official coding guidelines as a whole, you want to know and be aware of for the entire sections of coding, but for just chapter 19, our guidelines are right here for us. So let's look at these. So when we're coding pain, this is for any kind of pain associated with device, devices, implants, or grafts that were left in a surgical site. These we code with the appropriate code from chapter 19, which is again the injury poisonings complication of care section. And then we use the additional code G89.18 or G89.28 to identify if it's chronic pain or acute pain due to the presence of the device, implant, or graft. Our second coding guidelines that deal with the transplant complications tell us that the transplant codes under category T86 are used for both complications of transplanted organs as well as the rejection of these organs, right? Just because a patient had an organ transplanted doesn't mean that their body is accepting that, right? There's lots of rejections. So these are coded as a complication of that transplant, of that surgery. So in those instances, two codes are needed. We have one for the specific transplant complication, and then one to identify the specific complication, what it was. So again, one code says transplant complication. The second code specifically explains what that complication was. There are some complication codes that include the nature of the complication as well as the external cause that caused the complication all together in one code. Like here's an example. If you guys open up your ICD-10 CM tabular to T83.81XA, this code is for an embolism due to genital urinary prosthetic device implant or graft. So in this situation, if we look at that code, um, and in my book, it is on page 1142, but this tells us what the complication was and what it was caused from, right? So the embolism is the complication, and it's caused from a genital urinary prosthetic device, implant, or graft. So all of that is together in the one code. Sometimes we're, we're gonna have to code the, those each separately. Again, it just depends on how the code description reads.
And then when we're coding in intraoperative and post-procedural complications, these codes are found within the body system chapters with the code for the specific organ or structure of that body system. So for example, if we're coding heart failure following cardiac surgery yesterday, we would code a post-procedural heart failure following cardiac surgery, and we would code that as I97.130, and then we would code heart failure, which is I50.9. And I'll explain in a little bit how, how we find the codes. But I just wanted to point out that there's two separate codes for this example, where the one above we had one. So as a coder, you always need to make sure and read your code descriptions and ask yourself, did that description tell my whole story? If not, what are you missing? Go back and find the code for what you're missing. So our complications of medical and surgical care, again, they're part of chapter 19, but they're at the, the back of it, the end of it. They will be between code category 1080 and 1088. And these conditions can be a post-op hemorrhage, a foreign body left in a wound or body cavity, accidental puncture or laceration, complications due to implanted devices, like a complication from a hip prosthetic, cardiac pacemaker, heart valve prosthesis. I have coded all of these. Uh, these are not uncommon. Any of these are not uncommon to code. But the thing to remember when coding a complication of medical or surgical care is the physician documentation must support the relationship between the surgery and the complication or the medical care and the complication, right? We, the coder, cannot assume a relationship. It has to be documented by the physician or by the documentation. If the coder is unclear to this relationship, you must query the physician for further clarification, further documentation. Now, the other thing I wanted to point out is there is not a time limit for a complication. Right, It might occur during the same visit, it might occur years later. I have coded a chart where the patient had a sponge that was left in years and years later, five, six, seven years later, they go back in and find a sponge that's been causing you know, havoc for years. So you just never know, there's not a time limit. It's not like the complication has to happen within 12 hours or 12 days or 12 years, right? So the important thing is to remember is that the physician has to link the problem as a complication from the medical care or surgery. Now, when we're coding these, the main term we want to look up in the index, the regular alphabetical index, is just complication. So if you guys open up your, your index to complication, I'm on page 58, you guys can see the complication goes on for quite a while, right? It goes all the way to page 68. So there's 10 pages of complication codes. I'm just going to read a, write, a, a few of these. So we have complication um, from a mechanical breakdown of a bone device, from a breast implant embolism, from a catheter, a cranial infusion, dialysis, uh, extremity artery graft, episiotomy disruption, electroshock therapy, a post-procedural hematoma following a procedure on the eye, following a procedure on the ear and mastoid process, following a digestive procedure, following a skin procedure. So you can see there are tons of complications here. And again, just make sure that you're reading every category or subterm listed here if you're coding a specific complication so that you can make sure you can find the most specific code that's applicable to your scenario. Let's go ahead and do a practice. So in this scenario, we have a 65-year-old male who's admitted for a dislocated hip prosthesis in his left hip status post hip replacement one year ago. So what codes are we going to assign? Well, and again, 
we have that relationship documented, right? We have a dislocated hip prosthesis in his left hip status post the hip replacement. So the physician's telling us it's, it's status post, so it happened after this hip replacement. So we're gonna go to C to complication. And then the complication of what? What's complicated? A hip prosthesis, a hip is a joint. So remember, you, you can't always get specifics. You have to go to the category and then to specifics. So we're gonna go to complication and then to joint. So if you open up your coding manual, So on page 64 in mine under complication, and then if you alphabetically go to J to joint prosthesis, then we want to look down until we find mechanical. So you go complication, joint prosthesis, mechanical, and then ours was a dislocation. You can see the different types of mechanical once we get there, right? Breakage dislocation, fracture, instability, leakage, loosening, obstruction, perforation. So all those are different kinds of mechanical complications. Ours was a dislocation, and that gives us T84.02 with the hyphen. Remember, the hyphen's telling us that we have an additional code, and then the check mark's telling us that we have a seventh character. So we, if we flip to T84.02, which is on page 1142 in my coding manual, T84.02. Now remember, that's just five characters. We need six. So you can see we have to pick the laterality. Was it the right hip or the left? So our scenario said specifically left hip. So left hip is a one. And then we're going to pick our seventh character, which again is A for initial, D subsequent, S for sequela. So we know ours was A because he was just admitted for this. So our code is going to be T84.021A.